Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very, very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting, as you can see, with Nick Walker. We got a couple of very interesting posts from him. So, in this one, for example, he says that he's 17 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, of course, and he's 267 in the morning. Now, we all know how big Nick Walker is, but I mean, these numbers are just blowing my mind. I mean, this conditioning at 270 for a guy who is 5'6", it's just ridiculous, it's insane. But the main thing that I'm noticing here, I know it's early to talk about improvements, he competed a couple of weeks ago, but guys, don't tell me that you don't notice that his midsection is actually looking smaller. I mean, his waist is definitely looking smaller than his shoulders, than his shoulder width, and uh, compared to his legs as well. The waist actually does look a lot smaller. Check it out at the New York Pro, for example. This was not good. This was pretty bad. It was even worse at a Pittsburgh Pro and then at the New York Pro it was slightly better but still not good enough. I'm guessing at this point that he had some kind of an issue. Something with digestion. I didn't hear him talk about anything like that but... I mean, after seeing how much his uh, midsection, his waist size improved since the New York Pro, I gotta think there was something that went wrong. He definitely did change something. Look at this midsection right here and this waist size. This was really bad. Like, he was heavily criticized for it. And this is the reason why he barely, almost, almost lost to Martin Fitzwater. Why he placed, why his win was not very convincing. Besides this, he's a much better, much bigger, much more complete bodybuilder than somebody like Martin Fitzwater. Nick is a top 3 Olympian, guys, and there was something wrong with his stomach right here at this show. And it could be reversible, it could be a mistake, it could be something that happened then, and it's not gonna repeat. It's not doesn't have to mean that he made it bigger with putting on the muscle, you know, with age and so on. Maybe it was something, something went wrong, because after seeing the new photos, and check out these photos as well, like here, his midsection is looking even better. I mean, he's definitely controlling it much, much better. Maybe it's simply that he didn't practice posing enough for the New York Pro because he felt overly confident. He thought he can win that show even without perfect midsection control. And he made a mistake. He almost lost that show by one point. Many judges decided to punish him for it. And it seems like he learned his lesson. If it's not like a digestion issue, inflammation from certain food or something else that went wrong inside of his stomach, it could be simply posing because, guys, again, check this out. Isn't his midsection a lot tighter, a lot smaller here? This is actually surprising how much smaller it's looking right here. Could it be just the angle? I don't think so, because in the previous photo, in the posing trunks, you can still notice it. And you can see it in the other poses. Maybe some of you guys remember at the New York Pro when he was doing this version of Most Muscular, I said it is weird that we don't see the outline of his torso. But here, you can see it, on one side at least. You can definitely see it on the right side. Which is new, it wasn't like this at a New York Pro, at a Pittsburgh Pro, in the updates prior to those two shows, I mean guest posing and the show, so the changes have been made, and the crazy thing is, he's 10 pounds heavier now, so he gained weight and his midsection went down, I am really curious to hear what did he do, is it just the posing or something else, with like the food, the digestion and something, something in that sense, I wish Nick would comment and explain to us this, but so far he didn't address this problem at all. And it was a huge criticism that he received from literally everybody. I don't know if the judges told him this exactly, but it's gotta be the reason why they almost chose Martin Fitzwater as the winner of the New York Pro. It, it can't be anything else. It's gotta be that. And he's, I'm sure he's well aware. And I would really like to find out what did he do to change it this much in such a short time. Look at it from the side, guys. Do you remember all the photos of the side chest? It was hanging out in the side poses, especially side chest. Now it's finally a flat line. It never looked like this. And again, he's 270, he's heavier. I mean, he has 17 more weeks to go and he's super lean, so I'm expecting him to get even bigger in the meantime and then dial it down, but honestly, 
The only thing he needs to worry about at this point is just controlling the midsection. If that means not adding a pound of muscle more, then so be it. It would be so much better if he if he kept control. If he if his waist stayed like this, like it is in his photos, then man, like he can do really well at the Mr. Olympia. I don't see why would he be out of conversation to win the Mr. Olympia. If the other guys are off. I mean, that's kind of, like, necessary, you know, the other guys need to be off, because he's definitely not the most blessed guy with the structure, but he's, he's the freakiest guy, if he comes in with crazy conditioning, and the most important thing, he controls his midsection with his freaky muscle, he, he can do really well, he can even win the Mr. Olympia, I wouldn't be betting on it, though, but, you know, top three would be a crazy success, but yeah, those two things are required, better conditioning than at the New York Pro, and a lot better midsection control the way it is right now. Just keep it at this level. It doesn't need to come down anymore, really. Just make sure it doesn't get worse. That's what I would say to Nick. And I think you guys will probably agree. Whatever you guys think is the reason why his midsection was so much worse than New York Pro and it's improving now, tell me your theories down below if you have any. All right, the next thing is very, very interesting. It's about William Bonek who just posted a photo shoot at three days out and we got his physique from all the angles in all the poses and somebody in the comment section told me that Nick Strength and Power said in his video that uh, he thinks William Bonac is gonna win the Emperor Cup Spain. I didn't check out the video yet so maybe I'm wrong about this but that's what the guy told me and I believe it, it sounds like Nick Strength and Power and I'm just gonna say right here that he is absolutely wrong but it's kinda even silly to comment this, I mean he probably doesn't even look at what he's, what he's commenting, I mean he probably just made this conclusion uh, based on uh, William's reputation and his previous success I don't believe he even checked out his physique fully. I don't think he's not able to see these things. He probably just didn't pay attention enough. That's what I believe. And I'm criticizing the guy because he's the number one YouTube channel on this topic. And I hate it. I hate the fact that the number one guy is somebody who doesn't even understand bodybuilding really. But, you know, he's a mainstream guy for the hardcore bodybuilding fans. You guys know who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. So, like, hardcore bodybuilders are not really following Nick Strength and Power. I mean, he's good, like, for the news. But when it comes to analyzing the shows and, and the bodybuilders, he just doesn't understand it at all. So, William Bonac, in this one photo, I chose this one because this is the best one of his. And he can hide his flaws here. And here, he looks phenomenal. He looks great at three days out. His conditioning is freaking amazing. Stefan Kinzel did a great, great, phenomenal job with him. I mean, he, he basically... I don't think anybody else would do a better job bringing William Bonac back from retirement and, you know, getting him to this level of conditioning, of fullness, of muscularity, density, hardness. So he really picked him the best way possible. But, but, but... The age... The age took its toll. Father Time remains undefeated. I mean, we'll see at the show. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he wins the show. But no, no. I'm 99% sure it's not gonna happen. Let's check out the actual video. And let's see William Bonac's physique. The first shot we got is the front relaxed pose. And you guys remember prior to him retiring the last time, uh, he was uh, losing shows and placing very low, mainly because of his leg injury. His legs definitely lost a lot of volume and one of the legs just lost the separation of detail and here you can see it, his legs are definitely down in size in comparison to his upper body, which is also making his waist look a lot bigger, a lot blockier. I remember back in the day, Louis Marco nicknamed this guy the Pitbull and later at some of the expos, William Bonac wanted to, wanted to you know, physically confront Louis Marco for that, but that was a compliment. Uh, Louis was saying that William Bonac is so muscular, so so dense, so full of muscle that his frame is literally filled out to the extreme, you know, like maxed out. Is that still the case? No, no, unfortunately, he lost a lot of that volume and Stefan Kinzel couldn't do much to bring it all back, you know, he can uh, get him lean and hard and full, but he doesn't have the old size that he had back then, and with all that size, we could overlook his structural flaws, but now it's pretty much impossible. 
So the main thing right here, as you can see, are the legs. One leg has no details, no deep separation. It's very asymmetrical because of the fact that the legs are smaller. Once again, the waist looks a lot blockier. The shoulders also seem more narrow. But hey, for a guy who is 45 right now, he looks phenomenal. And for a guy who basically retired and is coming back, he looks great. He looks crazy, actually. Crazy good. But, you know, once at one point, he was a top two Olympian. Look at it from behind as well. He won the Arnold Classic twice, guys. He beat some phenomenal bodybuilders. He was at the top, the very top. So we gotta look at his physique from a micro lens perspective. It's gotta be done that way. I can't look at him as one of the newer guys or something like that. That's why I have to criticize him so heavily. If you, however, look at him from the perspective of a 45-year-old bodybuilder who is coming back from retirement, you know, in that sense, he's, he's freaking amazing. He's phenomenal. He, he's like the best in the world right now as far as that. But, you know, from a perspective of a bodybuilder who was the best, literally almost the best in the world he is definitely not what he used to be and you can see it from behind as well the legs simply lost the volume the calves are down in size a lot hamstrings also quite a bit uh the arms are also smaller right lat is big but where is the left one it's it's gone usual things you know that happened with age you know the wee taper is much much worse so, you know, he's done. Let's be real. I don't think he's going to come back and be what he was before. I don't even know if he can qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year. Best case scenario at the Ampro Cup. He's going to battle Sas Hirati and potentially beat him and place third. That's best case scenario, but I don't know. I don't know if he can even do that. Because, I mean, I think, I think this video, these photos are self-explanatory i don't know what nick strength and power is smoking or if he's drunk or is he blind or something like that or is he just you know talking whatever without even looking at these physiques i don't understand that guy i don't know how is he number one. i mean i get it because he started a long time ago and people are just not aware of the other channels but yeah, Nick Strength and Power doesn't know anything about bodybuilding. I mean, I'm sorry I sound like a hater, but I gotta say it as it is. And you guys know that I'm right. You know that I'm right. I don't care if you're big fans of Nick Strength and Power. You know that he is very, very often very wrong about whatever he's saying about bodybuilding. I'm sure most of you guys watching this have a better eye than him and understand bodybuilding better than him. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> as far as William Bonnack, once again, not the William Bonnack we once knew. No, no, no. This is not him at his best. Not even close. And I'll actually take back what I said about 99% sure. I'm 100% sure he cannot win the Emperor Cup Spain. Let's just put it that way. And I'm pretty sure he will not qualify for the Mr. Olympia. But, you know, hopefully he will enjoy his comeback, you know, competing and doing all that. For a guy who is 45 years old and coming back from retirement, this is phenomenal. Yeah, this is great from that perspective. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, and finally, we got a physique update from Derek Lansford in his offseason, 17 weeks out. And he says the beginning. So his prep is starting now i guess as far as his off season this year he didn't push it really he didn't push the mass gain and it was maybe like 10 weeks ago i was saying that he's not really doing a hardcore uh, bulk you know he's not really trying to grow as much as possible and some of you guys were saying he has time and so on but no no he just stayed very lean he stayed his usual size so i'm not expecting any big changes from Derek this year but but I think he's doing what uh, Hunter Rambert thinks is best. Maybe if he pushed his weight, his midsection would blow out. And because he's so short, he can't really grow that much more muscle without sacrificing the waist. He needs to maintain somewhat of a wee taper. Because without a wee taper, a guy at that height, he can't do really well against the taller guys like Samson Dawada like Andrew Jack, who is also coming strong. The reason why Derek is beating these guys is because he's very complete and he has actually a very good wee taper. Now, if he gained more muscle, he could sacrifice like uh, more fullness in the legs to obtain that crazy conditioning from the front. His conditioning was not very good from the front. It was great from the back, but from the front it wasn't very good. 
and here also like he looks very chubby from the front but from behind he's actually peeled this i mean not really peeled but very very lean like he has no fat in the glutes and his lower back those areas are always dry for him uh it's it's all about the details from the front let's check out the video as well so once again front double phenomenal we taper small waist great vacuum uh yeah he can improve those arms and legs as well i mean but he, he doesn't need to you know he won the mr olympia last year maybe he can get away with it this year as well but seeing how much hardy improved for the arnold classic and uh, expecting samson to be much improved and also nick walker it's gonna be very tough for Derek to win looking the same way he did last year last year he won by a hair if you ask me it was very close i could see the reason why he won it i'm not saying he got gifted that victory but maybe he did you know it was very very close so in order to win again this year he needs to close the gap is he gonna be able to do that without making crazy improvements in the offseason i don't know i don't know i mean is he looking great sure yeah he looked great last year too did he improve a lot no i don't see it but i mean a full year of training and then an entire prep maybe he's gonna go hardcore on the prep you know maybe do a lot more you know the supplements and stuff and try to grow into the show still i mean an entire year of working on bodybuilding very hard and i know that derek is very driven some changes will be noticeable i'm sure but like not crazy not a crazy amount and even some changes at that level can also be you know a lot for a guy who's already mr olympia and i'm guessing han rambo knows that if they chose him to win the mr olympia once and if he comes again looking the same or a little bit improved it might just be enough to win again whatever you guys think tell me down below if you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up for more content like this guys please subscribe to this channel thank you so much for watching see you soon and bye bye